most important things to consider on your property is water drainage and direction. So Carson is here to show us how to manage it. So we are talking about flooding and mm. it is something that when it happens to you, it is the worst thing ever. You can have so much damage. It's happening right across the continent with so much wacky weather. Yeah. So what do we need to be looking at and I always feel bad because this is not a sexy conversation. We're talking no. about ditch no. digging. Yay, ditch Yay. digging. Yay, I always bring the goods to City Line. Okay, so here's the deal. We're talking about moving water from one spot of your property to another, yes. okay? So I'm gonna lay out some of the ingredients that you would use, and then we're gonna talk about three problems that people have, very okay. common ones, okay? okay. So starting out right now, as you mentioned, there's flooding happening across all of North America. Mm -hmm. And it's not in one area, it's on every coast across side to side. Yeah. So we have some areas flooded, some areas in full drought. So water is a big conversation topic. And you're seeing lots of people using sand, and sand is great for moving water away from your house when there's big floods. You see right. sand in bags, but you cannot use sand in any way in your landscaping. Okay, because sand does not hold its shape. So as soon as water hits sand, sand shift. washes away. Yeah. In the bags, it's held in place because it actually fills the gap, so it creates a barrier for water coming up. Got I it. see people trying to do sandbags around their foundation of their house, thinking that's gonna keep water from going into their basement. Don't do that. No. This is not, isn't gonna work, no. Yeah. What does work a little better is three quarter inch gravel. Now, you get a lot of different names for this particular product, but the reason you use this type of gravel is because it allows the water to flow through without actually washing the gravel away. Okay. It's got a bit more weight, a bit more substance and structure. Using this around the foundation of your house, you allow lots of pore space because water will go to the easiest route possible to get from point A to point B, okay? Right. This allows the water to drain through nice and easily. Okay. But let's be honest, it doesn't look pretty. No, it no. doesn't. So if you're putting this in your yard, it's not going to be the best focal point. Right. Yeah. Okay, so it's not pretty but does the job. Not pretty but does the job. This is what you're starting to see a lot more landscapers moving to. Mm -hmm. Pea gravel. You can have exposed pea gravel in the yard. It looks much prettier. Yeah, it does. It does the same trick, but in a properly designed area, it will not wash away when you get heavy flooding. Okay. And I, I'm giving that big caveat a properly designed area because you need to be partnering pea gravel with this stuff. Okay, so what is this? So this is landscape fabric. Okay. And the reason landscape fabric is used, especially for drainage, is to prevent the medium from yeah. actually being flushed away. If you get a heavy downpour, like we have all over the place, mm -hmm. it will actually move gravel. Water will move rock. This yeah. will help hold it in place, but the water can flow through the filter cloth itself. Okay, so how are you doing this? Is this on top of this? And I'm gonna get to that. Okay. Because we got one more ingredient that we need to include, okay? okay? So we're talking about how water gets through this part, mm -hmm. to this part, to this part. Right. Okay? Tiles and hoses, this is what actually is going to move the water away from point A to point B. I'm gonna get you to grab the end of that. Okay. This is my favorite part. Yay! Yay! <laughs> So these type of hoses are great for taking water from your downspout of your house yes. and moving it away. Got it. But we're not going to put this in the ground. And there's a reason why. Oh, this, really? Yeah, this particular one doesn't have any drainage holes. So I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to okay. bring this tile over. Whoa, big noises. This is actually a weeping tile. Now, ah. weeping tiles are different because they have little holes actually in the perforations on the actual tile itself. So all throughout here, there's some exactly. holes? Exactly. Okay. So what happens is, this is where the water's going to drain into and move along. Yeah. You need to put the fabric uh -huh. over the weeping tile to prevent sand and sediment from plugging the holes. Oh. So if it plugs the hole, the water's not going anywhere, right? right. So you're gonna put fabric, around your weeping tile with your gravel in place so the water can go through the gravel to the weeping tile and move away to the other side of your yard. Okay. Perfect. So where are you moving that water away to? Well, isn't that the million dollar question? Right? right. Not, I mean, and not that, your neighbor's house, are no, you? No, because that never happens. That happens all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but again, uh, yes, that's the, that's the important conversation. But yeah. I want to show one more little wrinkle, okay? okay. okay. This is pre-wrapped weeping tile. Oh, that's good. So you don't have good. to do the landscape fabric. You can put this into your yard down in no muss, no fuss. It's being yes. sold this way, and I love that because that little cloth yeah. saves you so much work. Okay, okay, good. So let's talk about where to move the water to because you're right on that. cue. You're right. That's the problem, right? Because mm -hmm. this is all about catching the water. Now we have to move it. Mm -hmm. I love products like this particular one. Yes. This is by a company called Realm, and what's nice is this type of catchment basin you put on the end of your driveway or on your patio between the patio and the door. So when you get a heavy downpour, water's in here and it moves to the side. 
you want to move the water to the lowest part of your property to get it to drain away. Okay. Now, there are simple techniques to do that. This one's easy. You can see it's going to yes. go side to side at the end of your driveway, shoot it out onto the road, or, yeah. you know, if it's on your patio again, shoot it to the low spots. Right. I like to shoot it to the driest part of my yard. Oh, that's right? a smart idea. You've got water. Why not use it for your grass? That's right. Okay, so simple. So here's some of the interesting products that you're seeing in the marketplace today that do just that. Okay. Okay, so remember, we're talking about three simple things for all drainage issues. Capture the water, yeah. move the water, and release the water. Get right. it out, okay? So you're seeing catchment basins like this one here. Mm -hmm. What's nice about this one is it's a mosquito trap. I'm gonna lift it up here so you can see it. It's a mosquito trap. So you don't have stagnant water sitting anywhere. A lot of people are worried right now with all the flooding that there's gonna be a lot of mosquito eggs. We don't want mosquitoes invading us all summer long. Yeah. This particular catchment basin pulls the water away, no mosquitoes. Okay. Then it moves it through the weeping tile, which I showed you, yep. and it pops up here. This you put out in the center of your lawn. Now, this oh. is expanded, so it's gonna look a little bit better. It's gonna look flat to the grass. Yeah. But as the heavy water comes through, this little thing pops up, waters your lawn for you. So this is almost water conservation. It's part and parcel. The two have to work together, right? Yeah. To be actually effective in your outdoor space, that's how you're going to do it. Okay. And with so many people investing in landscaping, I mean, you don't want water to be washing away all your good grass, your trees, yeah. your plants. So by capturing the water and using it to your benefit, you're actually preserving your investment, which is kind of huge. Now, would you, I mean, you would know to say to a homeowner, we need to think about all the parts of this, including water conservation. Mm -hmm. Would most contractors or landscapers mention this to you? <laughs> and or, or you should be going to them and saying, listen, not only do I want to have the weeping tile and I want to have a way to really drain the water, I, right. want to, I want to conserve water as well. I want to bring it back in so it can water my lawn. So when you've got educated landscapers, they're going to give you that information. Right. But oftentimes homeowners are coming to me when the problem's already in place. Yes. They've already got flooding. Now one of the big issues that people have emailed me over repeatedly is the neighbors have each raised their landscaping, they've raised their grade, and now all the water goes from their yard into the neighbors or into the, your space. Yeah. Uh, and it happens all the time. By using a system like this uh -huh. in front of the flower beds. Yeah. Okay, so you actually let the water run into your flower beds, uh -huh. put the drainage in front of the flower bed, you can now move the water away. The water waters all of your plants. Perfect, but mm -hmm. it doesn't flood the low spot in your yard. Right. Another solution, we talked about the house a little bit. Yeah. Again, by digging a trench along the side of the house, putting in the fabric, the gravel, and the weeping tile, you can now move the water away from the side of your house before it gets into your basement. Uh -huh. A lot of people pay for this service, but you could do it yourself. It's not that oh, hard. Oh, really? The key is, to get water to flow, you have to create a bit of a slope. Yes. 2% slope. It's hard to calculate, but over a long span, it's usually only a few inches. Yeah. But your pipe has to go on the diagonal to drain it down towards the road or in an area that's not going to impact anybody else. No, just really quickly, mm -hmm. if because since most of us, you know, they ha we have the home already and we've been through the flooding and now we need a solution. How um, how intense is this to get this done now when everything's all sealed? Done properly. It can be a weekend project. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, that is such good information.